Hello everybody. This middle school math video is about operations with fractions. The lesson, subtracting mixed numbers. We know we can only subtract fractions if we have a common denominator. So if you're subtracting two mixed numbers and you do not have a common denominator, the first step is to figure out the lowest common denominator. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to rewrite the question but we're going to leave the fractions blank. So we don't have any numerators or denominators. And then we're just going to focus on figuring out the lowest common denominator. Here's how we do that. We take the two denominators that we are working with and we show that we want to multiply them together. If they have a common factor between them, we wanna factor that out. And in the case of six and nine, we do have a common factor of three. So we put a division line here and below we put the common factor of three. Now we choose just one of these two numbers above to factor out with the three below. I'm going to choose the nine. So it looks like this, three divided by three is one and nine divided by three is three. And then you multiply what you have left, in this case, six times three and that's 18, which means the lowest common denominator is 18. So we come back to our question and we put in the denominator of 18 on each fraction. Next, we want to make equivalent fractions. So compare the denominators. We're going from a six to an 18, so we're timesing by three. One times three is three. Here we're going from nine to 18, so we're timesing by two. Five times two is 10. Now that we have common denominators, we can subtract, but we have one problem. If you look in your first fraction, you have a numerator of three, and we cannot subtract a numerator of 10. Three minus 10, we go into the negatives. So what we need to do is we need to borrow one from this whole number of eight to add to this fraction to make the numerator large enough. Here's what it looks like. Show that you're gonna borrow one from the eight by crossing it out and underneath put seven. Next, you're going to put in the denominator of 18 on your first fraction and then just write down the rest of the question. And what this does is it allows us to just focus on what does the numerator here need to be. At first, it's a pretty tricky concept. What's happening is we borrowed one whole which is 18 over 18, and then we're gonna add that to three over 18. That would give us a numerator of 21 over 18. But I'm gonna show you a little bit of a shortcut. So I'm gonna grab my highlighter here. To get your numerator on this step, what you do is you add the numerator and the denominator from the step above, three plus 18, is 21. So that's a nice little shortcut to use to help you out. So now what we can do is subtract everything. We start with our whole numbers first. Seven minus four is three. Remember, we don't subtract the denominator, so we'll write that in. And then now we can go ahead and subtract these numerators because we have a larger numerator in front. 21 minus 10 is 11. All right, let's try that again. Here's a good question. We have denominators of eight and 12, so our first step is we need to figure out the lowest common denominator. So once again, we rewrite this question with blank fractions, so no numerators or denominators, and then let's just figure out what is the lowest common denominator. So we have an eight, we're going to multiply that by 12, but then we wanna factor out the greatest common factor that these two numbers have, which is four. Next, we choose one of these two numbers to factor out with the four. I'm going to choose the 12. Four divided by four is one, and 12 divided by four is three. I multiply what's left. Eight times three is 24, which means 24 is the lowest common denominator. So I can write that in now. Now I make my equivalent fractions. We're going from eight to 24. We're timesing by three. Three times three is nine. Here we have a 12, it becomes 24 because we're multiplying by two. 11 times two is 22. 
All right, so let's practice this step again. We can't subtract right now because this number nine is smaller than this number 22. So we're going to have to borrow. Let's remember the steps. We're gonna cross out the 15 and that's going to become 14. We write in the denominator of the first fraction and then we write down the rest of the question so that we can come back and just focus on what is this numerator. The shortcut is look at your fraction above, add the numerator to the denominator and that gives you your numerator, in this case 33. Now that the numerator on our first fraction is larger than the numerator on our second, we can do our subtraction. We start with the whole numbers, 14 minus 10, that's 4. We do not subtract these denominators, so start off by writing that in, and then subtract your numerators. 33 minus 22 is 11. Let's practice another one. We have unlike denominators, so we need to use a step to figure out the lowest common denominator. So we rewrite the question with blank fractions. We look at our two denominators and we show that we're going to multiply them together, but we factor out the greatest common factor, which is two. I choose one number from the top to factor out with the two. Two divided by two is one, 6 divided by 2 is 3, and then I multiply what is left. 8 times 3 is 24. 24 is my LCD, so I come over here and I write that in first. Next, I make equivalent fractions to get my numerator. When I go from 8 to 24, I'm timesing by 3, so I times 1 by 3 as well to get 3. In my next fraction, I times by 4, so I multiply the numerator by 4 as well that would be 20. Before I subtract, I check to see if I can. If my numerator on the first fraction is smaller than the numerator on the second, I'm going to have to borrow. 12 becomes 11. I write in the denominator only of the first fraction. I write down the rest of the question, and then I come back and I figure out what is the numerator. To do that, I look to the fraction directly above and I add these two numbers together and that would make 27. Now I can subtract. 11 minus 9 is 2. My denominator will stay as a 24. And then I go to my numerators and I do my subtraction. 27 minus 20 is 7. So there you go. That's the end of this lesson. If you would like a worksheet that goes with this lesson, there is a download link in the description.